Good morning, ladies. Okay, so um, I was having, well, I'm getting, I'm half ready getting dressed here, um, but I was having a bit of a conversation with Yusuf this morning about leadership and he started sharing something with me and I said, hey, can you just like stop, stop right now, let me put the live video on because I want him to share this with you guys because I think it's something that we all need to hear um, and, you know, he's so wise sometimes, so... I'm gonna pass the phone to him. He's laughing. I'm gonna Sometimes. pass the I'm gonna pass the phone to him. He's gonna share something with you guys, and I hope that we can all take something from it. And I hope you guys are having a great Tuesday. Okay, so here he is. Hello, everybody. You already know who it is, Gunny O, aka Yusuf. But anyways, this is what I wanted to share with you. When I was on recurring duty, um, I was in charge of his station. And I saw a major one day ask the question, if I ask you, what does it mean to take care of your Marines? Because knowing that recruiting duty is very tough, there's not a lot of time off, you know, you're constantly running, you're running pretty much 17 hours a day or more uh, to try to find the next brightest and greatest for the United States Marine Corps. So you don't have time. So having a weekend alone was not easy to have. So the question was, what does it mean to take care of your Marines? The majority of the people who were in charge of a station answered by sending them home to spend time with their families, um, giving them time off. I mean, it sounded like, you know, these people had general care, you know, care for the, uh, the, the Marines. They care about the Marines. They wanted to take care of them. And the sort of struggles that they were going through, you know, in the family and all that. So it made sense to send them home so they can spend time. But then... The nature of recruiting duty was that no matter how early you go home, no matter how much time you spend at home, there's one thing that will never go away that always remain. It's the load of work that you had to do in one day. So let's say, for example, if you had to make 100 telephone calls a day, if you decide to leave at 1 o'clock, nobody would tell you no. But here's the thing. Those 100, 100 telephone calls still have to be made. So it's really up to you when you want to go home. But at the end of the day, when the end of the month comes around, when it's all said and done, you were supposed to provide two contracts. That means the two individuals will have to go through the whole process, through the pipeline, raise their right hand and swear to join the United States Marine Corps. So it didn't matter when you wanted to do the job, how you wanted to do it. And the Marine Corps calls that independent duty. You know, you're left alone, you're given a piece of the pie somewhere in the United States, you're responsible for that area, and you have to find people in that area that are qualified and willing to join the Marine Corps. Obviously, it's a sales process. You have to basically explain to people why they should join the Marine Corps, not force them to join the Marine Corps, right? So it made sense to want to send the Marine home. So let's say you send the Marine home. He has to make 100 telephone calls a day. He ends up making half of that, and you want to take care of him, you send him home. Yes, he will go spend that time home. So that's 50 telephone calls he hasn't made. The next day, the same thing. So by the end of the month, in in one month, 50 telephone calls accumulated over one month is a lot of work. Now, when that Marine at the end of the month doesn't have those two contracts, picture this. You literally ruin his career. Now, was it a better idea to force him to do the work, even though he didn't like it? Would it suck for him to be at work all this time to make sure he does what he's supposed to do to have the contracts? Yes, it will suck because the family would not see him. But the majority of the people thought that taking care of the Marines, sending him home to spend time with his family. But was I really taking care of his family, though? Because the day the Marine get fired out of his job, the day the Marine basically gets in trouble and he loses his rank, the money that was supposed to be used to provide for that family, to take care of that family, the family vacations, the quality time they're supposed to spend together, that is taken away from the Marine. Now you're looking at divorces, going, rates going up. You're looking at careers being destroyed. So sometimes the easy route, the easy answer is not always the best answer. So you might have somebody in your team, right, that has a family. It makes sense to spend time with your family. But tell me this, would you rather be home, not work your business, spend the time with your family? Or would you rather work hard, make enough money to take your family to Disneyland at the end of the year and spend some quality time? 
the choice is really yours. It's really up to you at this point. What you call quality of time. If you call quality of time being home, playing with the kids, while your business is falling apart, then yes, that's your definition of quality of time or taking care of your business or those under you. But if you call quality of time actually setting aside time where you have the money and the time, the opportunity to take your family to do something that they will always remember, then that is your definition of quality of time. So you just really got to hold yourself accountable, hold yourself to the fire. You have to dig inside and ask yourself, am I really doing everything that I can to make sure that I'm successful? Am I really doing everything that I can to, to set myself up for success, to set my family up for success? Because you can be gone the next day. You can die tomorrow. You can die a month from now. You know, I just lost my little brother. He was 25 years old. That's not something that was planned. The kid was 25 years old. Now, any of you guys can be gone tomorrow. What have you left behind for your kids? Now, that quality of time is not going to be beneficial for the kids when you're not around. If the kids get sick to the point that you really need to need a surgery, if you don't have the money aside, is that quality of time enough to take care of the kid? So sometimes we just got to sacrifice. We have to prioritize. We have to have a plan. And then we have to sacrifice. As long as the people around you understand what is at stake, what is going on, they understand the plan, that will come along. I was on recruiting duty. My wife, <laughs> you think she liked the fact that I was never home? Absolutely not. But she understood what was at stake, what I was doing. And I gave her a timeline. I told her, give me one year. I will bust my tails. I will get promoted ahead of time. And I'm going to have my own station so my schedule will change. She understood the plan. She gave me the space that I needed. I put the work in. In one year, I did get promoted two years early. And they gave me my station. So guess what? She got to see me ahead of time. She got to see me home more because the plan was set. It was understood. And I put in the work. And she was willing to sacrifice. So you sacrifice up front, you reap the benefits later. But if you don't right now, really what you are after which is taking care of your family, taking care of whatever you have to take care of, that's going to fall apart one day because you did not really plan, you did not have a goal, you did not put the work in when you needed to. So that's all I wanted to share with you, just something to think about. Uh, what really your plan is, you know, uh, the sacrifices you have to make, uh, it's either now or later, but you have to pay a price. The price can be paid now. I prefer to pay the price up front and rejoice later then, you know, dragging my feet now and then suffer later or the people around me even suffer because of the fact that I dragged my feet. So this is just something for you to think about. Again, have a wonderful day. Um, this girl over here looking pretty. Happy birthday. She's 20, <laughs> 23 years old. I'm trying to get ready, so, um, you guys. Here you go. But I hope that was helpful for you guys because, you know, um, Yusuf has a lot of uh, a lot of things to share related to the military. Um, which really always, he inspires me when he shares these things with me because it's the same thing with our businesses, with our Monate businesses or any businesses that we're running. So I just wanted him to share that with you guys. And yes, I'm still working on my birthday, you guys. i got to do my headshot for uh, the Monate magazine. I have to... Um, I got to do a lot of things today, but you guys, um, I'm going to save this video and I'm going to share this over on, um, with Sarissa and see if she wants this to be shared over in her group as well. But I hope you guys are having a great day. See you later.